So let's consider a car driving along some rolling hills as shown in the picture down below. Um, the car's traveling 27 meters per second. What's the magnitude of the normal force acting on the 65 kilogram driver at the bottom of the first hill? Uh, and then finally, how fast does he need to travel to become airborne at the top of the next hill? Sounds like some interesting questions to consider. Let's go ahead and dig in here. Um, down at the bottom of this hill, let's assume they're moving uh, right to or left to right here. Uh, the car is moving this way, tangential velocity of 27 meters per second. If I consider the forces that are acting on that driver, uh, we know that the Earth uh, has to be pulling that driver downward. Uh, with a force that we would typically call the weight. And uh, if the car were stationary, the normal force would be just as big as the weight. But we know that since the car is accelerating upward, there has to be a uh, net unbalanced force up. Now I drew that to be somewhat extreme uh, to recognize that the upward force must be bigger than the downward force simply because we have to have an unbalanced force upward. So the unbalanced force right there must be towards the center. Now there might be some other forces acting here. We probably have some air resistance. Uh, we probably have some rolling friction and so forth. We know that the tires are actually pushing back on the ground and the ground is pushing uh, the car forward. These forces would be balanced and they are not centripetal. They are not acting along the center line, right? These forces would be considered centripetal forces. So, since we're looking for the normal force here, let's go ahead and calculate that out using uh, none other than Newton's second law. Okay, so we're going to look at centripetal forces. Uh, we see that there's two forces acting, N and W. We're going to subtract their magnitudes simply because they're in opposite directions. And let's see, I'm given some speeds here, so I'm going to use this version of uh, that equation for A. And since I'm looking for N, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add the weight to both sides. And uh, as I continue on there, uh, I see that, let's see, MV tangential squared over R. I'm going to replace the weight with MG. And uh, interesting here, I can pull out an M. And I have a rather nice equation here for the normal force. I'm going to write it down here. Uh, N is equal to M times V tangential squared over R plus G. Now this is sort of interesting. This value right here actually represents the centripetal acceleration that the car is, uh, or the person is feeling. And this portion here of course represents the um, acceleration due to gravity and so we can see that the normal force really has two different portions for acceleration one of them is our normal gravity and the other is the fact that we're accelerated upwards towards the center now i can go ahead and plug in some numbers here uh, we can do that relatively quickly based on the values that are being given here 65 kilograms uh, this would be speed is 27 meters per second got to square that the radius of that turn is 45 meters uh, plus 9.8 meters per second squared, and I see that the normal force acting is about uh, 1690 newtons. And so that's more than what they would normally feel. Uh, normally they would only feel about 65 times 9.8. They'd normally feel about 637 newtons of normal force, so they're going to feel quite a bit heavier here. So they're not actually heavier, it's just that the ground is pushing them up uh, with more force than usual. Now the second part of this question is uh, how fast would they need to travel to become airborne at the top of the next hill? So let's consider what the FBD would look like over here. We see that the earth is still pulling down with a force equal to the weight. Uh, maybe this would be just the driver, not the car as a whole. But if the car is airborne, so is the person. So let's consider the FBD to be very similar to what we had over here. Now the normal force, again, if they uh, were not moving at all, the normal force would be equal to the weight. But we know that the faster they're traveling, the smaller the normal force would become because we need to have a net force inward. So what happens right at the point of liftoff? We see that the normal force would reduce to zero. So this would be the FBD at the point of liftoff. I want to figure out the speed at which that would occur. Now again, we might have some, uh, let's see, we might have some 
force from the road pushing us forward. We might have some air resistance and so forth. Again, these would be balanced because it's traveling at a constant speed. They are also not centripetal. The only centripetal force would be this one. So when I go to determine how fast the object would have to travel, I'm again going to use nothing other than Newton's second law. I see there's only one force acting centripetally. That would be the weight. It's equal to m. Since I'm looking for the speed at liftoff, I'm going to replace a sub c with v tangential squared over r. I'm going to replace the weight with the way we calculate the weight. I see that it doesn't matter uh, what the mass of that person is. It doesn't matter what the mass of that car is. It cancels out of that equation. And I see vt would be the square root of r times g. I can plug in some numbers here. For this particular problem, well, uh, let's see. The radius is 65 meters. The acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's about 25 meters per second. So if the car is traveling at 27 meters per second, they're actually going to become a projectile here. And they're going to land somewhere over here, not stay on that road. They could only travel at 25 meters per second before they start to come off of that road.